Hi, I'm Alex Hamer. I'm a technical artist and a recent master's graduate, and I worked freelance on Project Pegasus throughout and past the end of my master's degree, where I aimed to design a system which allowed artists to create AAA quality cloudscapes in Unreal with the help of Houdini, and to also allow real-time cloudscaping to allow last-minute drastic changes. This video will discuss the cloud system used in the Project Pegasus environment. This system came about when Epic released the first beta for Unreal 5.3, which featured native VDB support in the form of sparse volume textures. As explained in earlier videos, VDBs, otherwise known as voxel database or volumetric data blocks, are a format standard for containing volumetric data, typically in the form of density, temperature or color. This allows for volumetric simulations such as smoke, explosions of fire or clouds to be saved in a format which can be read by different software. This is the ideal way of transferring this type of data and enables extreme fidelity. Unreal was slightly late adding support for this format and thus initially on the project I was developing a system that did not utilize this technology. However, when it was released, I saw the potential and the level of quality that was possible and decided to pursue a new system using what I had learned from developing the previous one. What I ended up with was a single blueprint actor which could be dragged into the scene which contains the volumetric cloud component, some material and blueprint logic. To keep the controls simple for the artist, I add all the parameters for each cloud in a structure array. This simplifies the process of making quick changes as they are all in one place, and you wouldn't have to flick around between different actors. A quick shout out to Thibaut Lambert for the original logic behind the material. He beat me to developing a prototype and released concept only a few days after the first snapshot of Unreal 5.3. Though with my system, I wanted to give an ease of use side. I included various extra options and controls, which later down the line became extremely useful, such as a custom density multiplier. I wanted to give as much control to the end user, but to also not overcomplicate things. So I chose to have the traditional transform controls, as well as a uniform transform, a density multiplier, as just mentioned, and some ease of use capabilities, such as quick toggling and labeling. The actual logic behind the material is fairly simple. Essentially we use the SVT sample node and input the world position and scale with some matrix transformations into the UV of the sample. This gives the result of our VDB in the exact world position relative to the volumetric cloud component. I compress the transform logic down into its own material function to keep the cloud material organized and you can see that here. The SVT sample node outputs its density parameters, which we set up when we import from Houdini, which we can then use to input the extinction of the material. We can then combine all of these by simply lerping them together and feeding it into the extinction of the volumetric material. On our blueprint side, we use a construction script to update some material collection parameters and do some arithmetic to plug in some material parameters for each cloud object. We're essentially just updating in the material where each cloud is, and because we have it as an array, more and more clouds can be added with no extra work on the blueprint side. The result of this work is an array where we can quickly add, input our VDB file, and play with loads of controls very quickly. Having a system where you can quickly adjust the location of clouds around the scene, as well as adjusting their density became extremely useful. For example, I often found that when I exported a cloud object from Houdini, it would look very different in the lighting conditions within the scene in Unreal compared to the Houdini viewport, often much denser and stronger. So this control allowed me to adjust this on the fly without re-exporting from Houdini, which would have been a timely process. This system is the final system that we decided to go with and enabled AAA quality VDBs to be utilized directly from Houdini without losing any detail or information via something like volume textures where the data between the slices are lost. Unfortunately, this system still had a few limitations. In Unreal, usually within the material editor, when you're working with multiple texture samples, you can increase past the default limit of 18 by changing the sampler source to shared. However, with sparse volume textures, this is just not possible, so a maximum of 6 is the highest number of clouds possible within the material. 
due to the amount of samples needed for each cloud. This, however, didn't limit the project as the new Skybox node in Houdini 20 allowed massive sky layers to be in one VDB file. It's worth noting as well that this issue may have been fixed or changed in the recent versions of Unreal as we were working with the beta builds. I hope this video has given you an insight into the Cloudscape system behind the Project Pegasus environment. I hope you enjoyed watching and feel free to check out some of the cloud tutorials released alongside Project Pegasus, which will give you a look into how I created specific cloud types within the environment using the new Houdini 20 tools. You can find the video on the Project Pegasus page on the SideFX website or the SideFX YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.